Job done. Sorted. And with the elevator choking, I've had to unchoke it. Joiners have been joinering. The BBC have just arrived. Morning, Holly. There we are, we can we? Are you bugger? I think it was quite wet last night. Good morning. It's been soaking. <laughs> Did ask for rain. Got too much. Okay, Kev's going to get the fish spreader onto the fence there. Go do some fish spreading on the oilseed rate. The spreader's tucked away in there behind quite a lot of stuff. There it's tucked away in there. Behind some boxes, a quad bike, some minerals. 50 mil, apparently, of rain we've had. Just shifting barley onto the pit again. Should get it all finished up today. That bell's all caught up with the drying. There we go, Kev's got the spreader on. Green on green, one orange on red. Ooh, there's a combine in here. Obviously there's been 50 mil of rain, so we're not gonna be needing that for a few days. That flipping dug, where is she? There. I'll come back in with a forklift and get this pushed up. Trailer emptied, we'll get the conveyor going again. So I need to top of the dryer, elevator, bottom intake, top shed incline. This valve sits at the top of the elevator, so that's on auto at the moment. I think we should just be good to press start. Emptying. This charge is on a 50 second timer, it's off at the moment, so I could just actually do a manual open. When I flicked that to open, what I meant to do was press that button. Manually discharge, what that's done is opened up the valve and now it won't close. It's fine though, because it's only half a hopper and it'll just empty into the trailer. But I should have pressed that button. That wrong pressing of uh, the button is causing me issues. So because I've put it on to discharge fully open, it's not then allowed the conveyor below and the elevator to clear. Normally there's a discharge of an amount of grain drops in, conveyor takes it, elevator takes it, and then it all draws out of the wee hopper at the bottom here and then it gets a bit of empty time to clear everything and then another batch is dropped whereas I left it open but because I switched it to open fully it never got a chance to fully clear and then it built up, built up and then the elevator ground to a halt and with the elevator choking I've had to unchoke it which means a big pile of barley to clear up so this is the elevator here so there's a, a belt with buckets on it that goes round in a loop like that picks up the grain at the bottom and away back up again so you just take that panel off and basically all this grain was choked in here. So flush it out, panel back on, now it's moving again but I just need to clear all this up. Just getting the spreader sorted out, Rory's out from Hamilton Group sorting it out. There's a, there's a different cable needed to what's on the new Hollands and just fiddle about and get things sorted out. So hopefully they'll get it sorted out because they sell Fent and they sell Amazon and it's a Fent and an Amazon. Clearing up the last wee bit of barley here. BBC have just arrived, um, it'll have been on the TV already because it's going out tonight and you won't see this video tonight. They're filming for, to do like a new presidential election between, what is it, Sunak and Truss. Those two are visiting Scotland and the BBC are doing a piece based on Scotland and what the general public think about the two options basically. But they wanted somewhere to come that's a nice backdrop and there's general public to ask questions. To. That's a lot better. Surely nowadays there's a robot that can do that. I'm sweating after that. Dryer's almost finished. It's on a cooling cycle now. It's finished drying. Probably only got five minutes left. Click here. Cooling 13 of 30. So it's got 17 minutes left until cooling's done. Then emptying. So I can disappear for 17 minutes and do something else. Package has arrived. Replacement bit for the grain dryer. Up. Cut towards your chums, not your thumbs. That looks too long. This doesn't look correct. Looks too long, but maybe this slides into the inlet that goes down that way. We'll find out once we go up. Right, once Dad gets back, he's away just now. Once he gets back, he'll put me up in the cage and get this fitted. Dad's back. We've shut everything down. Dad's gonna lift me up to just in there, which is where I need to fix. This piece is going in. Do I need any tools? I don't think so. Shouldn't do. And we've still got the end of the double extended boom. Quite funny, because I was saying the other day we don't need a double extended boom. So the issue now is that this wee section in there that I'm replacing, but when I disconnect that, this whole thing's gonna wanna sag down and I've not got enough hands to deal with it. 
So Dad's going to try and get the cage positioned so I can lean it on the edge of the cage. If I could get a bit higher, you might see the map in the field from here. But it's quite a lot of people. That's the entrance. People over there, over there. It's fairly busy today. Whoa, and then out again, just a wee bit. Whoa! You can see what's happened. As the grain's flown down here, it's just start to wear down this edge and it's worn through, created a hole. Someone smarter than me suggested I just turn this 90 degrees, or 180, not 90, sorry. That would have worked as well, but I've already ordered a new one, so I may as well put it in. That should be it. It looks a wee bit of a mess, but I mean, I've just absolutely lathered it all in silicon. There's a new O-ring, there's no ring seats on the bottom of this piece. The others don't have O-rings. I had to take that one off as well, so I can move this section and then slide that section in. It comes to down to about here. Dad just running green just now, so. Looks good. The bottom of this one was quite worn down here as well, so that's now rotated up to the top. Job done. Sorted for now. Properly sorted this time. Last time we were just patching it. I've just cowped another load, discharged back on, so it should be green. Just come out here in a second. You can see I spilt some more. Come on. Here it comes. Back in action, we've got green coming off again. That's the sun out, so we were considering maybe a push will get sown tomorrow. Dad's away down Edinburgh way uh, for something else, but he's going to pick up oilseed rape seed at the same time down at Dodd's seed. It's getting delivered on Thursday, it's Wednesday tomorrow, so he's just going to pick up while he's there in case we want to go sown tomorrow. There's a tiny bit there on the pit left, but that's all the seed barley dried. The next thing that we'll be cutting is exactly the same. So that's why there's still a wee bit there. Normally, if that was us done with that crop, we'd put that into the dryer, we'd grab some dry stuff, mix it in with that to make a full batch, and then dry it just slightly less than usual. All done. That off, that off, that off, that off, that off. Shut down. And that's the dryer done until we get combining again. Won't be tomorrow. Joiners have been joinering. So this is a chill. It's got an insulated floor. This is just a storeroom and we've got more bits over here. This is just a corridor passageway. That is going to be part of the shop. That's why it's got a dye in it, that concrete. So the concrete floors in the shop are dyed a wee bit darker just to make it look a bit nicer, a bit neater. Corridor up here, there's going to be a ramp built here because this is at a different level to that is. And then I'm not 100% sure where that is. Still don't know. There'll definitely be a bit of a corridor in there, but I don't know whether it's going to be added store, added to kitchen because it's next to the kitchen or added to the shop. Because this is going to be a chiller, It'd be good to be able to get potato boxes in and I don't know if this is wide enough. Is this six foot wide enough? One, two, five, six. By the time there's a door on there on hinges, I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, I'll find out about that. The door would be better on that side because that level's built up already. If we want to get the wee forklift up to get up in there, that won't work because there's not, not enough room to run a ramp that way because there's a road there. Here's our Scotland editor, James Cook. The last splash of a Scottish summer. The seasons are about to change, students are heading back to school, and while these day trippers select sunflowers, in nearby Perth, Tory party members are picking a new Prime Minister. I think people are ready for someone who actually can be a strong leader. I wouldn't vote the Conservatives myself, but I think maybe it would be good to see who else could do maybe a better job or something different. We definitely need a change, I think. Everyone's ready for something different. I think the Scots in general feel a bit ignored uh, by the UK government in general. And that's something you'd hope that whoever the new Prime Minister is, they might do something about? Hope so. Not moving towards independence, but perhaps acknowledging a bit more that Scotland has, has perhaps independent needs. Get the Tories out. Why? Because they're no good for Scotland. They don't care about Scotland. Never have, never will. What's the answer for Scotland then? Independence. Has been for years, always will be.